Welcome to the Yaraya Jokes Podcast, a Monday edition. And that's right, we have comedian Fiona Reed once again, where Uriah is starting to lose his mind about doing the same interview, where every day is the same, editing the same interview. Oh, he's created a twilight zone of his own making, and speaking of something else that doesn't exist, Uriah Westman's comedy career! A oh, fan, fan, fantastic, that's right. I've decided to do... A, th- a really long interview with Fiona that's over three hours long. And I do have respect for all my guests, so I do have to at least go through it to make sure something is uh, interesting enough. And you know what? This episode, we're talking about a lot of people you probably don't know. We're talking about a lot of things without explaining them. So if you're lost, you're going to be lost just as much as somebody who was found finding out that they just wasted an hour of their life. Now, roll the clip. I like, so Santa Barbara was great. And I, because everyone says you shouldn't start in LA. Like, or stuff like, or shouldn't start in New York. Start somewhere else and move there. So being, once I moved to LA, I felt like everyone was just way up here when I was down here and I thought I was good in Santa Barbara. So it was like cool to have to like really step up my writing because I wanted to compete. Yeah. I also, I've been listening to a lot of my sets from like years ago and I'm like, holy fuck, I was awful. So one thing I want to do is I want to apologize for every single one of those Canada jokes I ever made (laughs) that you guys had to endure. One of my lines, my opening line for my set was, I'm from Canada, A." That was a joke that I did. And I'm like, that's awful. That's hack and it's terrible. And that's probably why Trey got a little bit annoyed because he's from Canada and I'm just sitting here making these hacky Canada jokes thinking I'm like this good comedian. And then realize I'm okay, but I'm not nearly as good as I thought I was. Yeah. What was it? Do you record every set? every set and a lot of them I haven't listened to so I'm re-listening yeah. to them and things like the Burt's Back Room and the Fourth Wall ones I kind of like those well, those I it, it's cringeworthy but the ones that I can re-listen to again are the ones from Mel's because those are like where I can hear feel myself getting better and getting like the more I listen to those ones I think those shitty mics are better in the bars where you're wanting attention than yes. the, paying the five dollars. Having to for, fight for like, it. Yeah. Well, in LA in general, they're just sitting there like, hmm, not Bill Burr. Like, okay. <laughs> or like, even if you do make a good joke, they just sit there and hate you because fuck you for being clever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what happened though is then there was the kind of Santa Barbara's good and then. I'm kind of, I'm glad I didn't end up getting a place with Trey and stuff. Then who knows where my life, I would be in Utah or something. Or I think he's like living with LA Comics in Utah. Yeah. 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 That's cool for him. Um, there's, I listen, so I record every single thing that I do and I have a book and I say where it was, the jokes, and then I take notes on what was good, what was, and, and like how long the set was. And I did that for every set ever. So that's the 2019 book. And so this is my 2020 book. I thought I'd get a cute one. And so are you are you recording and listening to your Zoom shows? (laughs) Yeah, I think so. There's a gap in here. Now, see, because I I didn't I once stand up was over, didn't listen to the ones I was behind on because I was like, then once I get caught up, that's it there. So I got sad. So then I took notes on these are like the Zoom ones and stuff. Yeah. Nice. It's 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 always good because what's hilarious is when I was interviewing Maximilian, he didn't bring out his joke notepad. And me, I'm like, I really like the grinding out and like working on writing, especially now you can't get up. So anytime I see someone actually writing and caring about stand up now is, is inspiring. So I got a new notepad for writing jokes just write so these are all the ideas at the front and then i'm just like just oh see i haven't written that much though but it's like just write just sit down and make yourself write on it 
even if it's not funny and you're never going to say it in public. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but now what's funny is instead of just having like one small joke that I need to try on stage, now I've written entire bits that I need to try on stage. So instead of just this one little teeny joke, now I have invested all this time into a bit. And now I'm like, okay, did I spend hours on this something that doesn't even work? I'll find out. No, right? Oh my gosh. I have like another joke notebook somewhere where I'd... So I'd go back through... No, it's just too much. I'd go back through, find every time I ever said that joke, wrote down the notes on that joke so that I could see which parts needed to be kept, which lines, rearrange it, and then try and punch out the weak parts that never got a laugh or remove them. So I like take, took it down to a science and like stitched it together like a little Frankenstein. Nice. That's It's, it's cool because all these people... This is all stuff that's not taught. It's kind of like advice here and there. And then all kind of uh, comedians have this own little way that they experiment and do it. And it's always interesting. And me, what I do is I just write pages and pages where maybe there's like one good joke out of it. Right. This is, uh, Do you? did you ever meet Callahan Welsh? I've heard Tall that name guy, before. crazy blonde hair, kind of a prop comic. I just, I have this because he handed it to me and said I needed it because he was a bitch. But it says premise, setup, punchline, tag, tag, tag. Oh, here it has his name. Callahan Welsh. Made by Callahan Welsh. And I just, I kept it because I just thought that was so cool. And it looks like, like third grade homework or something. It looks like a bank statement. I thought you were showing me like your bank <laughs> statement. You're like, look how, look how this money I'm I am. I'm doing well. Yeah, no. Yeah, Fantastic. no, I thought it was adorable. Oh, so, yeah, because it's so blurry on your end. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, if it ends up being blurry, it doesn't matter because I focus more on audio because this is, this is more if something is funny and I can make a small clip and promo it. It's better to do the video. But, Wait, so, so are your viewers not going to get to see how ripped I am? No, uh, it will because it's going to be a lot of work to edit it. It's going to be <laughs> video and audio, but it might be more audio than video. We'll find out. But no, people will still see that uh, you haven't gained a lot of weight over the coronavirus. Make sure they know I have a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> For the viewers listening, she has a six pack. Oh, yeah, I do. Probably lost my, my, my one listener now. What? So I'm going to try Austin, but... You brought up it's, the connections are so important and almost forgotten and knowing other comedians. Like when I went to New York and not knowing anybody, but Paul Clay was there and then he was yeah. trying to get stage time and the booker wanted him to work the door. That's when I realized the system is broken and the only way to get stage time is to produce my own shows and do that. Like this yeah. is seeing this comic that's an Emmy nominated writer that's been up for 30 years being said he can work the door for a five minute spot is just profound. You're, you're Absolutely. Mu- you're- oh no, I'm muted so I can eat my muggy. So I'm going to try Texas because I need to get back on stage. And if that doesn't work, I'm going back to Santa Barbara, LA. I mean, New York, I'm not, it's too much. I think Texas may become a bigger comedy scene now. Yeah, Joe Rogan at the end of... I've been listening to all the Kill Tonys and stuff because I'm going to try to get on it. So I'm, like, taking notes. And if Wait, I'm going to get on... is that happening online? No, Kill Tony's happening live now. They have an audience. And holy fuck, the comics that go on there are... Sh- like, I can't believe mm-hmm. it. Are you guys... This is, like, my problem with, like, comedians that are, like, newer or don't seem to be self-aware... If you watch yeah. Kill Tony once, you will learn what to do on stage. Have a one minute to work on and know what you're going to talk about and be interesting. But it seems like all these people are just don't even understand that they go up there, <laughs> they shit a brick. Everyone's going to hate them now. They're stealing other comic stage time and then they're they're not even funny. But everyone does it. So I think it's a way to almost have people have killed Tony especially when they move to Austin to know about you if you go up there do a killer one minute and I talk about being in a cult for like 10 minutes and then that's interesting yeah wait he's moving to Austin now he's already in Austin so 
Kill wow. Tony is happening in Austin now. Joe Rogan was just on the last one. So, oh, uh, Joe Rogan, he, at the end of that one, said that comedy in Austin is going to become the mecca. He's going to get everyone to move there. And I'm like, I'm going to try to jump on this train and see where it goes without going to L.A. Right. Because I can rent a uh, apartment for $700 there, like a nice apartment. Yeah, well, well, then Texas is going to go up, but it's like it's kind of cheap now. Yeah. Maybe I should think about Texas instead. I don't know. All because I went there once and I kind of hated it. I kind of didn't like it. Uh, mm -hmm. Texas is it's kind of ugly. Uh, and but Austin's like a liberal area, so it doesn't have a lot of it. But that's why I'm going to try it for a month and see what, how it works. If it's good, if it if I could get a show going there, or I could get on Kill Tony and that goes good. And just yeah. position myself to be known quickly, that yeah. can work. But if it turns out that there's now going to become LA for a certain, let's say that all of a sudden Austin has a comedy boom and everyone goes to Austin. And before you know it, kind of LA doesn't have a lot of comics. So that could That's, flip both ways. Yeah. Uh, it's funny to me because I'm like, I don't know when I'm going to leave here, but no one knows when pandemic can be done. <laughs> but, uh, I want to go to LA and I want to get a job in entertainment though. Like I want to be someone's a bitch assistant or whatever, you know, like I just want to kiss someone's feet. And no one will let me, but, uh, it's funny to me that it's like, literally if I can't get a job working in entertainment, I might just keep working with horses. Cause I joked with my boss once with the jerking off the horses thing. I was holding the like pocket pussy and I said, I can't wait to put this on my resume. And he said, oh, you have to. Yeah, that's like a quality skill not everyone has. Like, And it's unique. If you want to like stand out on like a resume, be different with it. That's why like for my uh, uh, getting stage time, I was just sending my city hall video instead of my stand up clip. And I got gigs that way. Put that on your resume really? and they'll think that's hilarious. I think I, yeah, what was it? I used to have Muckmeister on my resume, but now I think I've done better stuff. I just used to shovel animal shit. And uh, I, in an interview, they brought it up and they were like, oh, it's good that you know how to, because I, um, it was for an entertainment thing that I did get. They were like, it's good that you know how to handle horse shit because there's a lot of it. Ha ha. <laughs> that's, that's what I learned about. I, so in America, every single job interview I've ever had, I got in the job. I went to one place in New York City and I was hired right away and I was promoted within a week. And my oh, trick, wow. my trick is you laugh at every single joke that the boss makes. I mean, as soon as they make one joke, you laugh at the interview and they, well, this is what they're, they're not used to people laughing at their jokes, but yeah. I have a real laugh and they think it's genuine. So they want to hire me because they, they people want to feel validated but feeling validated by making a shitty joke when someone's not funny and they're not used to that, that's how you get job interviews. That's how you get it. I don't know if that works for women because women are just expected to laugh anyway. Like, I'm a laugh slut. I bet I laugh at my job interviews all the time. You're, 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 probably, <laughs> you're probably right. And it, it also, because I, I guess I'm using my white privilege to get, but also it's like I'm using it to get jobs at restaurants and sushi. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, I'm using my white privilege horribly. Yeah, yeah. What was that is bad. I don't know. I always think at open mics, I'm terrible. I think at open mics, you should always, especially on Zoom, because everyone on Zoom's like quiet the whole time, and then maybe one person will go, ha I think you should always be wanting to make me laugh, because I'll just be sitting alone in my house and I'll be like, ha ha ha! And then everyone jumps on. I'm like, at least one person laughed, and now everyone better fucking laugh. I, well, I, I, I have. This is my thing about the Zoom shows and why I don't want to do them is because it's, it's, it's giving people an opportunity to steal your jokes from the other side of the planet, from anywhere. Oh, that's true. Someone could just that be writing down true. everything. And I'm like, I've worked a lot. Some of these bits I've worked years on and I'm still working on it. And I'm not going to be That's depressed guess, in my living room and then someone's going to jack it and steal from it. I guess 
I'm getting, I wouldn't keep doing Zoom shows except now I'm making like Zoom comedy friends and uh, I'm getting booked on Zoom shows. So now I'm like, oh, I guess I gotta do Zoom mics again to prep for this show. But it's like, I don't wanna be bothered. I get up early in the morning and I work physically hard. And then I'm like, it's time for fucking bed. I'm not gonna stay up till like 11 telling jokes to losers on the internet. And all Clay was talking about how there was someone masturbating uh, they had to kick him off. Uh, and it was just like, this is just like, it, it says a lot about the, I think it says more about the comedian that, a, that we're to a point that a comedian needs to do this just to like feel something or feel some sense of normalcy in like this strange environment we're living in that we will talk. We won't even stand up that we will sit at our desks. And I mean, if I was going to do a Zoom show, I would like connect my mic and like make it like it's like put Some effort into it. do that and those are the weird ones. Those are the weird ones? Yeah. Ow. Hey guys, I just love being here. How about the Mets? <laughs> yeah, I don't like this. Yeah, because you don't have a <laughs> like a, a mic stand. So if you had like a mic stand and it was all like set... You, you could do jokes. <laughs> I have a nice recording mic, but yeah, I don't have like a stand or anything. Can I sit down now? Yeah, you never had to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know I what? Got... The, the grainy physical comedy will be great. It'll be great. <laughs> it, 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 it will be. And, and here It'll we go. It'll be great. Corona, uh, coronavirus is like my mom's parenting. It doesn't exist. <laughs> 